Published weather data going back 160 years, which it says shows global warming is caused by humans. It will be a key source for the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, a crucial part of next week's Copenhagen summit. Skeptics, though, claimed this week that leaked emails showed researchers had manipulated evidence to back theories of man-made climate change. Today, tens of thousands of people marched through central London, urging the summit to agree a workable and binding deal on cutting carbon emissions. Andy Davis reports. What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? A sea of blue was the idea, a tidal wave of protest to engulf Westminster in the run-up to next week's much-anticipated climate change summit in Copenhagen. It had been organised by a group called Stop Climate Chaos Coalition. 20,000 marched today, said the police. We come to our capital city to insert some backbone into our political leaders. There was a central demand here today that rich countries commit to reducing greenhouse gas emissions by at least 40% in the next 10 years. But amidst the many calls for action, there was unease too over the recent story of leaked emails which had raised questions about the integrity of some of the scientists driving the climate change agenda. I think it's very unfortunate, whatever the truth is, that these emails are now muddying the water. But the science and the the cultural and the, the, the sort of... The societal impetus that we now have to build low-carbon economies and to rethink everything from the ground up should not be spoiled by what I hope in, in, in a historical sense will be a very, very minor blip. What they perceived it as being was bad science and they didn't want bad science to have a platform. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but I think it's very dangerous that the Saudis and other people are trying to manipulate that into being evidence for climate deniers. There's no doubt that this whole row over the leaked emails has unsettled those desperate to see a deal in Copenhagen. Last night, the anti-sceptic rhetoric was ratcheted up by Gordon Brown as he spoke out against what he called the anti-science, flat-earth, sceptics. But perhaps the most striking illustration of just how much impact this has had on the whole climate change debate came today in a notable announcement from the Met Office. In a press release, they revealed plans to disclose early next week data from more than a 1,000 weather stations that record the global land surface temperature record. Part of a key set of data spanning 160 years, which along with two other sets of data, has underpinned international assessments of what's causing climate change. The Met Office saying, in effect, if you don't trust our analysis, look at our primary source material. Then this evening, as Gordon Brown met up with representatives from some of the groups marching in London today, he couldn't resist another swipe at those questioning the scientific consensus on climate change. There is an anti-change group. There's an anti-reform group. Uh, There's an anti-science group. Uh, There's uh, a flat earth group, if I may say so, uh, over the evidence that exists about climate change. And we've got to show them that the scientific evidence is strong. This was what one so-called climate sceptic had to say in response to that. I think that is one of the most disgraceful statements from a Prime Minister I have ever heard, and I'll be quite blunt about it. And I think, actually, even many scientists who support global warming would agree with me on that. Science does not function by consensus, and most certainly not by politically driven consensus. In fact, the history of consensus in science is terrible from Galileo right the way through the beginning of the 20th century when 95% of scientists, for goodness sake, believed in eugenics. Science has to, by its very nature, be sceptical. If in recent days the email row has undermined confidence in the climate camp in the run-up to negotiations in Copenhagen, there was some encouragement for them last night from Washington. President Obama, it was disclosed, had changed plans to attend the final day of the Copenhagen summit, where it was said his input might be most productive. Police are hunting uh, for a man after his wife's body was discovered at their home. 26-year-old Michael Roberts hasn't been seen since Thursday night when Vicky Roberts' body was found in the garage of their home in Runcorn. Today...